art of making a collage is very much an intellectual task. And the history of my people is so complex during the period that I am attempting to portray, from 1870 to 1933, that I have found the collage process to be the process because there is a process of layering. Not only layering images, but also what those images mean. And it's like making a postcard, but in this case, a very complex cultural postcard. While Arthur had already had some training in an academic situation, uh, it was pretty much white man's art, still lives and things like that, you know. And there wasn't an opportunity for him to express his Indian uh, background, heritage, ideas, values. Uh, and so he came here for this two week long summer art institute uh, to work with Oscar Howe, who was and is, you know, the uh, you know, acknowledged leader of the Northern Plains Contemporary Fine Arts Movement. Uh, just having that man uh, believe and say with assuredness that I am an artist, I am an American Indian artist, I am a Lakota artist. And he pronounced to us that you can be artists too. A major problem that Arthur had to, had to face, how could he be contemporary at the same time how could he, you know, pay tribute to his tradition and bring the two of them together? And he encouraged us to use our own heritage, our own artistic traditions, our own sensitivities, even our own language. Holding back Indian artists to kind of what people think Indian art should be has been a problem with the, for that Native artists have faced for years and years and years. Initially, my first work were done in the style of my mentor, Oscar Howe, because as a very young person, I was convinced that this is, as he convinced us, that this is what contemporary Native American art was about. Describing Arthur's work is complicated because he has done so many different styles, using so many different approaches. And I had been through other phases, the Oscar Howe period, and the abstract expressionistic period, and the uh, modified petroglyphs and pictographic period. And I was searching for something new to do. And so I became infatuated with the story of Standing Bear because he was the patriarch of our family. And uh, he was an artist, and he was a warrior, he was a buffalo hunter, and as he traveled with the Buffalo Bill Wild West show. And, uh, but he continued to make art all his life, right up to 1933, the year he died, he continued to paint in the indigenous style. So it was then that I decided to utilize the original drawings of my great grandfather or other ledger artists or muslin artists and the printed word and uh, historic photographs uh, this was a, a radical new approach. No other native artists were doing this at that time. And composing them in, by that time, what I had perceived of as Lakota culture, American Indian culture, is actually a collage. It's made up of many time periods, and I thought of the experience of my own people. Having traversed the 19th century, from buffalo hunting days, to pre-reservation, to reservation, to traveling in Europe, to traveling throughout the United States, undergoing that experience, having to change their lives. Huh? Their children were attending schools and bringing back with them the influence of the white education and blending that with Lakota traditions. And if you took those components and put them together all in one composition, it's a remarkable story of what these people underwent. Arthur has a really grand sense of humor, but it's the sense of humor of a quiet type. He's somebody who will give you a, a, something that's humorous that you need to think about, and probably on a couple of levels. So I think of the automobile as a representative of technology and culture and education, all those non-Indian forces. And there is an expression called being taken for a ride. 
The entire Lakota culture was taken for a ride because they had to live on a reservation in one place, adapt to modernity, and still, in quotes, on their own insistence, retain their traditions. Huh? I guess in the long run, I, uh, I would like my collages to, to communicate to non-Indian and Indian audiences the veracity of the, uh, of the human condition under stress. In other words, the Lakota people were confronted with either annihilation or adaptation. The great hope, you know, was the, was the expectation that Indian cultures would disappear. That uh, through uh, acculturation and assimilation, uh, someday there would not be Native American people, that they would be absorbed by the greater white society of this country. And that has not happened. And that's why I make my art, is to, to, to tell the story of, of, of my tribe, the Lakota, and other Native Americans, and the persistence of, uh, of tradition. And more often than not, this is part of this is the role of the artist. The artist throughout history has always been the ears, the eyes, and the voice of the culture. Thank you.